Welcome to the April edition of the Missouri School Boards Association Board Report. We begin with a look back at the beginning of MSBA Spring Advocacy Series. The spring virtual meeting was held on March 13th and featured a presentation by Dr. Stephanie Cuevas, an assistant professor of education at Atala College of Educational Studies at Chapman University in California. She is the co-author of the scholastic book, Everyone Wins, the evidence for family school partnerships and implications for practice. Dr. Cuevas considers it imperative to consider the significant and central role that families play in shaping the educational experiences of students. During the session, she said that although board members aren't involved in the day-to-day -day of school operations, there are still many ways that they can help promote family involvement. And I think it's just advocating for it, right? And again, really, how are you defining parent involvement, family engagement, and understanding that it is a variety of things, right? It's not just a very typical, we used to call it, you know, moving beyond the bake cell, right? That is not just, you know, families doing that, but again, something that folks that are not in the nitty gritty of schools every day can advocate for is like, how do we get creative about developing the educator's capacity to do that? Another way is always, you know, advocate for more funding for it. Right. So I think that those are two ways to like really think about like, well, what is needed in my local context, um, district level or state level? And really, how do we help both educators and families learn how to work with each other? And that's through capacity development, often being professional development and making a requirement. Like I mentioned before, and a lot of research shows that, you know, I, I as a teacher, I as a principal am expected to make these relationships happen, but I don't know how. The first Lunch and Learn of the Spring Advocacy Series featured an interview with Dr. Margie Van Dieven, conducted by MSBA Executive Director Melissa Randall. The discussion covered a variety of topics, covering many of Dr. Van Dieven's experiences, opportunities, and challenges she faced as Commissioner of Education. She explained that regardless of your role in education, staying focused on your why is key to serving. You know, it is about serving every student every day. I mean, it just that you, you hear that often throughout our state, but it is, that is the why. And what what I have found to be a little bit challenging at the, at the department level, sorry, this is longer than 30 yeah, seconds, but it good. is always about what's best for our kids. And people remind me that it is, I'm much removed from that student in the classroom at Jefferson City at the, in those. So what can I do? A lot of times my why shifts to how do I lift up those we serve our students by lifting up those who serve them. I've, you, you've heard me say yeah. that. And our job really at the department is, is how do we put systems or policies in place that help the local leaders do their jobs and in a better way to better serve our, our kids, help, help them help our students. Dr. Van Dieven also thanks school board members for their support during her time as commissioner. That is probably one of the first things I learned in my role at the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education and working with school improvement efforts is the critical role that our local school board members play. And I have grown in relationship with many of the local school board members across the state. So thank you for your support, uh, for your professionalism, but also for your friendship throughout, throughout this time. State Senator Carla Esslinger will be Missouri's next Commissioner of Education beginning in June. Esslinger will continue her work as a state senator until June 1st, when she will join Dr. Van Dieven in the commissioner's spot and begin the transition. The deadline is approaching to sign up for your district's free emergency operations plan development tool. MSBA, in partnership with the Department of Public Safety, is offering another school safety improvement program for fiscal year 24, expiring on June 1st of this year. The program funding provides public school districts that did not participate in last year's funding program with one year at no cost access to MSBA's online emergency operations plan development tool, Mo EOP. Any Missouri public school district or charter school not using the Mo EOP tool should take advantage of this limited time offer. John McDonald, the chief operating officer of MSBA Center for Education Safety, says that it's more important than ever to have a good emergency operations plan. I responded to and managed school threats and emergencies for the past 16 years. And what I know to be true is that the school threats of today are more complicated than ever before. And the very best school safety, prevention, preparedness, response, and recovery begins with a robust emergency operation plan. 
At CES, we believe strongly, like all of you, in the duty to protect our students and staff. And it was with this in mind that we created the web-based Missouri Emergency Operation Plan Tool, also known as MOEOP, that 247 districts across the state have been using for the past year. The MOEOP tool, with your input, will provide you with a safe and secure web-based all-hazard school emergency operation plan. Visit the MSBA website for more information on how to register for your district's free MOEOP tool. Make your plans now to attend MSBA Summer Summit June 24th and 25th in Branson. Join school board members and leaders from across Missouri to learn about emerging trends and hot topics in education. It's a great opportunity to participate in valuable sessions and to connect with your colleagues from school districts across the state. Also, be sure your board is represented at the June Delegate Assembly to be held in conjunction with the Summer Summit. Delegates will be electing state officers for the coming year at that meeting. The nominating committee is proposing a slate of officers for consideration, including the offices of president-elect and vice president. You can watch video interviews with the candidates for state office posted on the MSBA website. Registration information for the Summer Summit is also posted on the website. And last but certainly not least, if you are elected to your school board for the first time this month, welcome to school board service. Missouri law requires all school board members to receive 18 and a half hours of training within their first 12 months of service. MSBA's new board member training fulfills this requirement and provides the foundation for becoming an effective board member. The training is free for all new board members. Check the MSBA website for a schedule of training opportunities along with registration information. That's it for this month. Thanks for allowing us to have some time at your board meeting, and we'll see you in May for the next MSBA Board Report. I just wanted to uh, mention that uh, I had the honor of uh, last Monday evening to have dinner with the uh, State Board of Education and the commissioner, and uh, it was a small group. Uh, we just sat every other one, you know, and uh, got to talk one-on-one -on -one with uh, state board members. And um, now there's four four state board members that are uh, their terms are up, but they haven't been reassigned, so they've been just hanging in there. But this this week, the governor did announce that he has is uh, has two for the two that I was sitting between. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, so anyway, but you know, we all know that has to be approved by the Senate and that, that's where it gets political. And so anyway, but uh, it, I, I just uh, had the pleasure, wanted, wanted you to know I had the pleasure of doing that and uh, tried to represent White City well and <clears throat> with my conversations with them. Thank you. Okay, so tonight uh, the board meeting goes a little different than all the other times. Uh, we had an election, so we will now adjourn this old board and we will now reorganize ourselves. Public comment. Yeah, we're not going to have public comments. Yeah, well, I'm good. So, what we're going to do is we're going to accept the election results, adjourn the board, we'll administer the oath of office, and then at that point, then uh, we'll start reorganizing ourselves. So, you're going to have to give us about 10. 10 12 minutes to get this done. So, first of all, motion is any motion to accept the certified election results? So moved. Second. There's a motion and second. Any more discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Third, six, zero. Okay, uh, I need a motion to adjourn the old Board of Education. So moved. Second. Any more discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? He is now the boss. Uh, I will direct you to administer the Oak Alums. Congratulations to Dave Micas and Aaron Williams. I'll have you sign this and then um, you'll stand up and repeat after me. Okay. I do solemnly swear. I do, I do solemnly, solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. That, that I will support, support the Constitution, Constitution of the United States, States and the Constitution of the State of Missouri and the Constitution, Constitution of the State of Missouri. Of Missouri.
and I, that I will faithfully and impartially discharge the duties of school director. And that I will faithfully and impartially discharge the duties of school director in and for the Wright City R2 School District, County of Warren, State of Missouri, to the best of my ability, according to law. In and for the Wright, the Wright City, City R2 School, R2 school, R2 school District, District, County, County of, Warren, of Warren, State of Missouri, Missouri to the best, the best of my ability, ability according, according to law. Sorry for that. <laughs> Uh, congratulations, and we will proceed with the meeting. Uh, the next item of business is I would hear nominations for board president. Uh, I would nominate Austin Jones if you would continue to, to serve. Second, do you need a second? I do not need a second. Do um, you have a nomination for Austin Jones? I would hear uh, additional nominations for board president. Hearing none, I would ask for a motion for uh, board president for Austin Jones by acclamation. We'll require a second. So moved. Second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, nay. Thank you for the uh, your trust and your, um, I'm humbled by your uh, vote. Uh, so now we're going to continue on with the additional um, offices. Um, need a nomination for vice president. Nominate Aaron Williams. I need a second. Second. The motion and second. Any more nominations for vice president? Okay, I need a mo I need a motion to cease nominations and elect Aaron Williams by majority vote uh, by acclamation for vice president. So moved. Second. There's a motion and second. Any more discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? I heard six zero. Secretary, uh, last year, David uh, Micus was the secretary. Uh, any open nominations for secretary? I nominate David Micus for secretary. Any a second? Second. Motion and second. Any more nominations? I need a motion to cease nominations and accept David Micus as the uh, board sec secretary by acclamation. So moved. Second. Any more discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Six zero. Great. Election of Treasurer. I would like to nominate Beth Dean. Okay. Mary, are you uh, not going to be board treasurer anymore? Okay. Sorry. I would, but uh, I'm okay with Beth taking that. And I would be glad to if there was any great responsibility. <laughs> but I appreciate the nomination. So, I mean, so, I mean, Mary, what, what do you want? Well, we don't have to change anything. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, there's a motion for Beth. Uh, mm -hmm. Are there any other, any other nominations? I should um, probably ask Beth if she wants. Yeah. <laughs> I appreciate the nomination. Uh, can I decline and nominate yes, you? Okay. okay. All right. Let's do that. All right. All right. There's a nomination for Mary. Is there a second? Yes. Second. Okay. Any, any more discussion? I need a motion to cease nominations and elect Mary Graper by acclamation for our treasurer. So move. Second. Any more discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Six zero. Okay. MSPA delegate and alternative. I was the delegate last year. I think this is the only extra job that I had as part of the board. And I would like to continue as delegate. If anybody else would like the job. Um, have fun in uh, Branson on June 24th and 25th. <laughs> I'd like to nominate Austin Jones as the um, delegate. And I think I would served as alternate. We'll get to that in a second. Okay. Second. Okay. Okay, anyone nominations for delegate? In a motion to uh, cease nominations and elect Austin Jones as delegate by acclamation. So moved. Second. Motion and second. Any more discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Six zero. And then also we needed an alternate. Um, again, um, Mary was the alternate last year. Do we want a new alternate or same one? I'm going to nominate Mary for alternate. 
Motion. motion and second. Any more nominations? I need a motion to cease nominations and elect Mary Graber as the alternate. So moved. Any more discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. The Greater Warren County Economic Development Committee District Representative. Last year, Mary Graber did this. Mary, do you wish to continue? Yes. I would nominate Mary Graber. On second that. There's a motion and second. Any more discussion? Okay, I need um, any more nominations. I need a nomination. I need a motion to cease nominations and elect Mary Graber by acclamation for the Greater Warren County Economic Development District Representative. So moved. Second. Any more discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Any more? Um, any opposed? I heard six zero. Policy committee. I was actually quite impressed with the individuals that were on this last year. I think they should continue. I would not like to be an alternate. I would like to be on the committee. Okay. I will be an alternate. Okay. So. Or hiding. So I think Aaron and Beth. So basically what we're saying is Beth Dean and Kyle Lewis would actually like to be on the policy committee and then Aaron would be the alternate. I need that you know, those are, I need that motion for the nominations. So moved. Why can't we have three? That was my question. It's not a quorum of the board. I think you could. That's what you wish to do. And in the event someone has a conflict during the policy meeting, that will ensure we have at least two people there. Okay, so do we want to do three? I think it's a good idea when Beth and Heidi and I met about our survey the other day. I think it drove a very productive conversation. Okay, so we're going to withdraw that previous motion. So, does anybody have any great concerns about having three members on the policy committee? Jeremy? <laughs> <Or the mayor. laughs> okay. So I need a motion for Aaron Williams, Beth Dean, and Kyle Lewis to be on the, the policy committee. So move. Do we add Heidi as the alternate? Second. No. <laughs> but then it's an issue of a quorum. Yeah. Then there's an issue of a quorum. Um, there's a motion and second. Um, any more discussion? I need a motion to cease nominations and approve Aaron. Beth and Kyle by acclamation. So moved. Second. Any more discussion? All those in favor? No. Uh, all, all those opposed? So Kyle, let me, did, did Heidi want to be an alternate? No idea. I was just saying, if we have three folks and one of them can't make it, is an opportunity Well, they, that was the idea behind having two of the third one there, and we have it. I don't know, because the problem I have is, if she were to show up, that's four of you, that's four of them, and we got sunshine motion. I think the alternate only shows up if, if yeah. someone on the committee reaches out right. and says, I can't be available to attend that night, right? Yeah, but I think with three of you on it, I think that's enough. If one of you can't make it, then two of you are still there. <laughs> I think I think you don't need an alternate if all three of you, that's my opinion. But I'll do whatever you all decide. I'll vote for whatever you all decide. I mean, it's not like this has to be set in stone this month. We can talk to Heidi and revisit it next month if needed. All right. She isn't here, so. I, I did, did. Did she express interest? That's no. Point. I was just. Then I would let it go. Yeah, I think. To your point, we can we can revisit it. That's it, right? Aren't we missing the? Um, we are residency. Yeah, yeah. That. Yeah. Um, okay, well, go ahead. We 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 hit that residency has not been called in more than four years now, and policy dictates residency in ninety nine point nine percent of the cases. So, after more than four years of it not being enacted, uh, we did strike that one uh, from the list. Now, if you wish to put it back on there, um, and certainly, kind of maybe Kyle mentioned there earlier. We could uh, form that as a committee if need be, uh, kind of as needed. But it was a little bit kind of, you know, we felt like we were doing it for nothing. What about the CSIP committee? Are we good there? Yeah, it's just it, as a, yeah, roles. yeah, okay. just roles. Okay. So do we need a residency committee? Because these are standing committees, the difference between the standing committee and just a on call committee, I guess. I don't think we do. No, the policies that dictated we got to review this year. It's pretty black and white. It is black and white. 
all, in almost all cases. Yeah. And nothing else that comes, it comes in front of the whole board at that point. That is correct. It's also just shady if we did call it. Yep. Okay. Thank you for your indulgence in that um, bit of uh, reorganization. Okay. West Elementary presentation, uh, Dr. Berger. Yes, we have special, special guests, two specials. And so, uh, Crystal, please, yeah, introduce your folks and take off. Hi. Uh, so, I am Mrs. Norman. I am our second through fifth grade essential skills teacher over at West. And so, today I have Sammy, who is a third grader, and I have Layla, who is a fifth grader. Um, so, we're here to talk about our postcard project. Is there a shy nudger? Yeah. I'll let you know. <laughs> um, so how this kind of got started is that over the summer, I was really trying to revamp writing in my classroom. Um, I wanted to be engaging and really make it more real life experience for them. So we started this thing called Friday Letters. Um, it is something they do every Friday. They either write to a, um, a member at their house or someone at the school. And so every Friday they get to kind of talk about their week, ask questions, and then just go over that whole pro writing process of writing friendly letters. Um, while we were learning about that at the beginning of the year, I was like, it's kind of like having pen pals. And that really sparked the second part of this, which um, I have a best friend in Illinois who does essential skills for secondary. And I was like, hey, we need to have to be pen pals. And she's like 100% on board. So we started the first round of writing. Uh, they wrote, I put in the envelopes, and I said I was gonna send them off. I get in the next day and they thought that their buddies had written them back already. And so we had a very much heart to heart that um, snail mail takes time. So I brought them a map, I showed them where Missouri is, where Illinois is, and how you, know, you can get mail from all over the world. And so that prompted us to um, kind of ask people for postcards. And so I made a post on Facebook, one post, made it public. It was shared over 1,500 times, um, shared on multiple platforms and social media, and we were like blessed with postcards. So through this, we started in October. We started in October with this project, and we still get some here and there, but ultimately we are kind of wrapping it all up. We got over 350 postcards. Uh, we have postcards from all the states and 18 countries. Uh, so through this process, they learned that Wright City, West Elementary has a mailbox. Um, no one knew where it was or that we even had one. And so they each got to go out and get the mail because the school wasn't getting anything. Um, and so through that, we, um, down here by Layla, we had someone from Australia send us a package of goodies. Oh, wow. Um, we even had someone in Missouri that's a Polish author send us this book. It was like a kindness book. Um, but I'm telling you, we were blessed with items. And so then we were kind of making this a whole circle of, um, going back to writing because that was our focus from the start and so these kiddos um as we were collecting postcards we have a running document of all the fun facts about the states that we were learning about and so each kid got to choose one state and with that they got um, i provided them with a google slide with virtual classroom links um websites that were more user friendly they learned how to do text to speech um, and so we really made learning accessible for these students independently. So my help was really just kind of guiding them with their sheets to write down the information um, and then writing to a company of that state. So this student wrote to, he did Maine and um, he got a postcard back from one of the lighthouses. This student wrote to one, uh, he used text pictures because that's how he communicates. And so we did text pictures to, um, a national park in Hawaii, and they wrote him back and gave him some goodies. And then this student wrote to the Space and Rocket Center in Alabama, and they sent us a class box of goodies. Um, but it was just really interesting, like the student had come in full circle. So the end of this project was that they had to take that information, <clears throat> organize it on a poster, and then share that information out. 
Um, so I do have two students here that are going to share their posters, and then the rest are on a video for us to watch. Um, so I'll have them go first. So Sandy, you go first. You're going to go first. So, my name is Sandy. Okay. And his name is Alaska. And what's one fun fact about Alaska? No lights. No lights. Good. And then I go through the Yep. Oh. Which is mine. I'm in Vila and um, uh, Sturgis, South okay. Florida. And the only last one of the landmarks is. In the world, and, and they give you a postcard and a map. So the video you'll see, it's about a minute and a half, and so they have their students. Um, and so in the video, you'll see that some of them are communicating differently, um, but they were all able to fully participate together. Yeah, some of the clips are. And what state did you do? Alabama. And what is one landmark in Alabama? And did you write to them? Yeah. And what did you get? Goodies. You got lots of goodies. Cowboys. And what state did you do? Maine. Maine. And what are some landmarks in Maine? Uh, houses. Lighthouses. Did you write to a lighthouse? Yes. And what did you get? Mm. What? <laughs> Hit the button. So that was our postcard travel. Okay. Thank you for giving us this opportunity to share. I know you guys don't get to see all the learning that happens in Wright City, but in this classroom, learning is absolutely amazing because it is done in a different way, but they all were able to take their abilities and apply it. Um, and then these were just the standards that we reached on when we were doing our research. But thank you. Hey, I can't overstate how cool that project was that Crystal did for the kids. And uh, if every kid was excited about it, you guys did great. Sammy, Layla, you guys did good job. Good job. Uh, when you go in Crystal's room, uh, uh, the kiddos are not sitting around. They are working, they're grinding. She's got them working every day. I've never walked in there before, and the uh, kids were off task. So uh, she's got an act for doing that, Crystal. Uh, I really appreciate it over the last couple of years for working these kids over and that you do an awesome job. So I just want to look at your So I got one uh, volunteer award I want to give out tonight. Uh, um, this person has been just hustling on the parent teacher committee front. Uh, just, just helping out. I'm getting emails all the time. Hey, we need to be over this. We need to be over that. And, and uh, she's really, uh, really been working hard, uh, making sure that uh, the PTC is uh, moving forward and we're providing lots of novel uh, experiences for kids. So Becky Dustin, come on up, please. 
Because she's probably be the first one to tell you that you know there's like ten other people that she's working alongside. But uh, Becky's kind of the she's the go between between Don and I and the rest of the committee. And, uh, and, uh, you've just been great. You've been a godsend. We've we've enjoyed uh, uh, communicating with you and know more than I thought it was Thank you very much. Good job, guys. I loved your project. Okay, uh, next item on the agenda is Wright City High School and East Edition updates. Dr. Berger. Oh, so uh, Mr. Christopher is once again with us. Uh, Ms. Christopher, which one would you like to start with? The drone footage we'd like to show and also the PowerPoint. Sure, let's uh, go to the drone, drone footage if we can. Eric, hit that line behind you if you would. Oh, that's, that's, that one. Yeah. Yes. Also, like a dry day. <laughs> <clears throat> it's really, really coming along. As you can see at the beginning of the video, the football field, the turf is down. Uh, the asphalt track portion of the, the track itself on the entrance is looking really really good i think anyway. the entrance yeah, yeah so that's the only part i drive by and all them houses that's a Stone Eric say I think my favorite piece of the building is to put color. Yes. Mm -hmm. color. It's still really brown. We're, we're working on uh, getting grass to grow between now and you know May fifteenth to get it get it down and, and start the process. Mm -hmm. Ready for presentation? I'm right. All right. So the, the high school update. Uh, I had a, a fill in for me last month. So hopefully he got you all the answers you needed, but. It's been wet. It's been really wet here the last six weeks. Uh, we've done everything we could outside between raindrops, but inside's really taken off. Uh, next slide, please. Sorry, Elizabeth. Uh, so ongoing activities, we have earthwork and, uh, and vegetation ongoing. Uh, interior framing and, and drywall hanging, really for the most part, the framing's complete. Uh, what we're doing now is a lot of the, the barrier ceiling, which you'll see the classrooms and the corridors. Below that, you'll have an acoustical ceiling like, like you see here. Uh, but there's a fire barrier above that. Uh, that's, I'd say, about 95% completed today. Uh, we've got interior electric ongoing. So I don't know if this was celebrated last month or not, but we do have permanent power now. Uh, well, the, you know, the main switch here has been placed. All the feeder wire has been brought to that. And we've actually had the, uh, the supplier bring their primaries in as well, too. So, so we are live. Uh, break the air is ongoing. That's a little slow going, again, due to weather. Uh, the glass and glazing is really kind of jumped up. Uh, we've changed our process where we're pre-flashing the windows. Now we're able to do in install glazing, install the windows before the veneer, uh, which we're able to just pick up a little bit of, of time back from those ring events. Uh, paintings ongoing, I'd say right now, you know, the primer coat, the block filler coat. As you progress through the building, we're about halfway through with that primer coat, the block filler. Uh, so it's starting to take shape as far as seeing a little more color on the walls versus just the 
the gray CMU. And then the uh, architectural sheet metal, so those guys started about two weeks ago. Uh, they're continually wrapping around the building and doing all the fascia, gutter, gutters, downspouts, all of the, all those fine details. The next slide, please, Elizabeth. As we move forward, we're working at the track, uh, looking at the track and field events. Uh, so right now, the asphalt track around the football field is, is complete. That's about a 28-day cure period before you can do the, the track surfacing itself. So we'll approach that. We're probably actually closer to two months out from doing the track surface itself. Uh, we've got the bleachers on the hillside to get the piers installed to get that vegetated uh, so we don't risk sediment and other things coming down on the track and, and jeopardizing the finish of that uh, that surface itself. Uh, but we're kind of geared up towards finishes. So the baseball softball field really started to take shape. Uh, you guys recall there's a track, sorry, a, a turf in field as part of that baseball field. So right now we're trying to get the cut to grade, get all the feeders uh, brought over the scoreboards. Get the vegetation going in the outfield, and then here in the summer months, we'll put the turf on the baseball field. Um, getting close to the installation of flooring. So, if you walk in the main entrance of the building, that's area A, it sits off farthest to the west. Uh, we've got color coats, uh, you know, basically color finishes in there now. The acoustical ceiling tile is in. Uh, we're, we're really close to being able to start the flooring process. And it'll start there and then work east throughout the building as, as we hit uh, the areas where we can do that work. Um, again, just more finishes. So this is the fun part of the job for me, where all the grunt work kind of gets us to this point. Now you get to start seeing the finishes, the color, and you know the hard work that you know that you guys put together with Bond and all the discussions and time spent picking out finishes. We're starting coming to the forefront. Right, next slide, please. Here's a completion photo of the turf. Um, you can tell the the rock. Around that was a muddy mess. It took a little bit of cleaning up to do. You got a pretty nasty hill, you know, hillside that naturally runs into that. And every time we play with it, we get a three to five inch rain that, that we get to go clean stuff up. But anyway, now we have the asphalt down, so that's an extra layer of protection. Uh, we brought in some other BMPs, put additional measures in place to help protect the field. Uh, so you'll see that if you drive by it. Next slide, please. Uh, this is a connector from area F to the cafetorium. Uh, so currently in this area, we call it area G, but the cafetorium. Uh, we're wrecking steel. We're getting ready to, to start going towards the decking and the roofing finishes on that. Currently, we're framed out all the way down the corridor. So we're, as we get roof cover, we'll be able to come into the MEPs and get the other, other finishes to follow suit behind that. Next slide, please. This is the interior painting. So this is the area A I was talking about. In this photo, we don't have uh, acoustical ceiling grid up or acoustical ceiling tile, but you can see the finishes here and you can get a glimpse of what that's currently looking like. Uh, it looks a little more finished than that today. There's bar joists being set over the cafetorium. Now that's ongoing work now. They're currently detailing that, that steel as we speak. Next slide, please. And here's a view from the north uh, northwest side, northwest elevation. The south uh, southwest elevation so the two areas you see that are still raw wood those are currently under roof we've only got a, a fairly small section of asphalt shingles still to do we expect that to be done this week uh, with the rain pushing out so we should be done that work thursday if the rain can hold out uh, next slide please. here's a view from the southeast elevation and one from the north and the east elevation here any questions or comments? Are you feeling good about like where we are timeline? I know that it's been a little bit wet, but has that caused you to fall behind on any? I, I know we have the, I don't see the months of sure. you know, all your check marks and stuff. On here. Yeah, and, and we'll bring a schedule update next okay. uh, next week. We've got our OAC meeting on Thursday to discuss some of the, the back sets we've had primarily due to weather. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and kind of in a quick summary, over the last 16 months, we've lost about 90 calendar days. Not saying we need that time back, but there's there are some activities we're gonna have to provide options to work through. But overall, I'm feeling really good about it. Um, some activities are ahead, some activities are a little bit behind, like with the birth and on the exterior. Um, but still overall looking really good. Thank you. Sure. I did the rain this afternoon. It was a short lived, but it was a hard rain for just a short period of time. Yes, How did that 
the track do through that? It did really good. So uh, I was actually walking with Eric, and, and as we walked into Area G to kind of overlook the field, I was honestly a little scared to peek my head out the window. Uh, we had water run off, like discolored water that made it onto the track, but no real sediment. So that, that's a big victory for us. And we got, I don't know what we ended up getting as far as, you know, accumulation. We were probably about an inch, maybe, maybe a little under that. It just came down fast and hard for about a half hour. Uh, so I was actually pleasantly surprised to see it hold up the way it did. Now, there's still going to be some cleanup efforts to do in those areas. But the, the big goal that we have is not to allow the hard sediment itself to make its way to the track. Um, so to help prevent that, we've got, you know, somewhere around, you know, not to give a whole lot of detail of this, but about $15,000 in additional BMBs. So these are uh, silt fence straw waddles. It's a uh, silt sock, which is a nine inch sock that's made up of basically soil and, and mulch combination. So what we did, we, we wrapped the interior, I guess it'd be the exterior curve of the football field, interior curve of the track, and the exterior curve of the football field at the hillside. So it's about a 400 foot stretch on both sides of that, uh, just as extra layers of protection. So we're hopeful that it's, uh, you know, that, that'll do the job. But if we need to add, as we get rain, rain events, we'll add to it. That'll mitigate that problem. Good question. Any other questions? When's this rock, riffraff or whatever it is gonna be installed, that will be below the bleachers? I should have a PCO next month, is that correct? But yeah. Yeah. Change order should be in my board meeting. So the process to that, even if even with the rock, we can't just put the rock down now with the membrane. We've got to get the piers dug in into that hillside. So the next step is to get the piers laid out, get those dug in. Uh, once those are poured and set in place, then we'll go through with the with the membrane uh, underneath the rock and get that rock placed. And then to the, out to to the size of the bleachers, has that been? seated in installed yet or now as far as we can go with it it has so we've got primarily off to the south um it's all it's all straw matting because you go know, anything with a, a three to one slope or greater has to have matting not just you know vegetation on it so as far as we could go without basically wasting money and destroying it as we you know dig for the piers okay that, that's place any other questions what kind of timeline do you expect on your piers to be done uh it's Kind of up in the air, Dave. Um, the short answer is we need about two solid weeks with good weather to get those in. Uh, we're, we've got some options to go through with the design team as far as right now they're designed to be spread footings. Um, we're looking at other drill pier options that would hopefully hopefully increase the decrease the construction time, increase the productivity of getting those plays. So that's what we're looking at. We've got a couple options discussed on Thursday. So you have two weeks to get the pairs in. I mean, if weather permitting and all that, two weeks, and then you would be able to put the membrane down in the rock. That's correct. And we can we can almost do it in sequence. What what I'm fearful of is I don't want to dig anything that we can't get you know placed and poured back quickly. So my approach to this is you know we're going to dig. We may open six holes, six pier holes. I want wire tied in that. I want rebar in it. I want it inspected and poured back the next day before we open up other areas. Um, Again, with this hillside being as delicate as it is, we've got to have a hopper, you know, off you know, that's going to take all the spoils from those holes. So it's not just sitting there and get those brought out. So it's just going to be a kind of a strategic effort going after that hillside. I see. Thank you. Any question? And then just to level set me, football field will not be able to be used for the season this fall because it's an active construction site. Or is there yeah. anything that we're targeting towards it being available for this coming season? Um, you know, we haven't gotten to that level of discussion. I mean, currently the, the completion date is uh, October 10th. Okay. So we'll have, we'll still, I would say it's probably off the table for this year. And there are some insurance things that we can probably all get together and talk through and see how we want to work that out. But just not completely off the table. But I would just say the standard comment is my insurance company would. Yeah, I you know, have to know specifics. So, okay. and does that all all that translate to limited use? Maybe is what we the expectation we could outpace that, or we could uh, run into issues that would delay it from. Sure, and I mean, you know, really, it's it's your building. I mean, once we hand the keys over, in you know, let's just say October, we hand them over October. You guys can do whatever whatever you desire with it. Um, I know that's kind of getting 
towards, you know, end of the season a little bit. So the semantics of those details, that's, you know, that's you um, But as far as, you know, occupying that field, why we have active construction, you know, we'd have to do some special things to make that happen. But spring sports are looking good. Or either the football and softball, I mean, football, softball and baseball fields on a longer schedule. Uh, the baseball fields, the only thing that we're, the only thing we're lacking on that is due to that bad study again, right? We lost about five and a half months on the site okay. because of that alone. Uh, there was some soil, some soil remediation for the football field and other things that factored into that. You know, loosely speaking, I would say that the impact of that side of the creek was about seven months. Do I need seven months? No, absolutely not. Um, but where I where I suspect we're going to be this fall is that's going to be your first growing season. So it'll be up to the district again. Do you have enough vegetation come spring? If you want to use that field, certainly it's yours and you can. Uh, depending on what that growth looks like, it may be wise to wait another season and, and play on it in the fall. But that'll that'll be well to see what the grass does and, and what we see in the off season. I think both of them are within reach. The other option would be, you know, if you guys wanted to go to a SOD application, certainly, you know, that'd be an option as well. But currently it's seed and straw and to get that to grow, you need a couple of seasons. Understand. Any other questions? Matthew, anything? We would still anticipate with the work that's ongoing and establishing grass and such that we'll start to see similarly with the water issues on fast lane, fast lane by about May or June. Absolutely. Yeah. So we're we're expecting, I mean, the the more pavement we get down, the more green space is available. Certainly the more we, you know, seed we put down as that grows in, the better off we're gonna be. Uh, specifically talking about though the videos and, and those things around social media with that water runoff, everything worked perfectly. That that's worked as designed. Uh, we know it's alarming when you know water's you know coming over the top of a wall, but the reason it did that is the inlets are, are barricaded off with eels, and they're supposed to be that way. They're called gutter bodies, but on a construction site to to follow stormwater compliance act. We have to have those there. They were diverting the water around those inlets deliberately. There's nowhere for that water to go other than downhill. Had we pulled that away, the water would have went in the basin and went through the, the structures in the basin and then underneath fast lane, uh, which would have been more problematic because it would have taken all that sediment and other stuff with it. Uh, so again, it, it worked perfectly as designed. Um, but yeah, as, as vegetation comes out and as rain will remove those gutter, gutter buddies, we don't suspect there's gonna be any problems there. So the question I had asked Chris was, I think, aren't we responsible for a slip lane, ultimately? We are. Mm -hmm. yes, sir. So what do you anticipate happening with that? And is that like at the very end of the project? Or? It, it is, and we've got, there are some options there. I don't know the specifics of what the, the city is going to do. Um, what we know right now, you're talking about the turn lane sauce. Yeah, right? the one that then saves maintenance thing for Right, yeah, so in looking at that, I mean, right now, the, the, the state of the road with that asphalt, we can't tie into it. Uh, if we were to tie into it as is, it would be for nothing. There's nothing solid to tie into. Um, there's a couple of options on the table. Again, we can talk about those Thursday you know, with the construction team. Um, in short, though, it would be either we could offer a credit back for what we had in that that you guys, you know, use at, at, at your will, um, or you know, we can we can take that work, but we can't do that work if the world of road is is up and addressed. So once they give us something to tie into, I don't know the timing of that work. Once they get that done, we will coordinate those efforts, knowing when they're going to be, you know, out there and working, and we can tie directly into that. So, the reason I bring this up is I was at the Board of Aldermen meeting, the last Board of Aldermen meeting, and Cochrane Engineering was there, you know, offering their, you know, they're talking about they got a 40 feet easement that comes up to the high the high school, then it goes to a 50 foot easement, and then goes back to a 40 foot easement. And so they're having a meeting on May 6th, I think. And I, I texted him and I didn't know if you guys were getting invited to these calls to have those conversations, whether you guys, and the question is, do you need to be there and, and, be, and be listening in to these conversations as Cochran and the city are starting to take shape of what they're gonna do the Ralph Cook Road. Sure. Now, to answer your first question, though, we have not been invited. Um, I don't know, maybe on the design team side, we would love to be part of that, just to get a better understanding, more so of anything than, you know, timing of it. Um, 
typically it would be one of the last things we do. Same same for area F, you know, with the gating the rock approach there. So the timing of that's critical. Um, that's the biggest piece I would like to know is when's that work actually going to go? Ideally, it would happen in the summertime, you know, at some point or the, the tail end of fall prior to you guys, you know, starting back school for the 24 school year. Uh, I just don't know what that looks like in Austin, but I would love to attend those if that's a possibility. Well, I know Kurt was the one presenting at the, the Board of Aldermen meeting. Okay. And so, I mean, I'm going to. I'm at this point. I'm dropping out of this yeah. conversation. I'll coordinate, and then I'm gonna make. I'm gonna let him coordinate, sure. and then let you. I just what I heard is board of Alderman. and the city and and in this contract we're both using the same symbol, which is copper. So that's should be easy coordination. Yeah, and that that'll help. Should be. Right. So I'm out of here. <laughs> so Thank you. I handed it off personally. <laughs> okay. Any other questions? Thank you for your time, and I hope you had a good vacation. I did. It was great. Good. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks, Bobby. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Take care of yourself. You just. I think it's the verbal report from Bob on the east. On the east. Yeah. Yes. So we are complete. I'm actually saying everything we've done. We've checked the boxes um, as much as we can. We will work through getting um, the closeout documents to to Jeremy. Um, Electronically and paper copies, I believe we're getting. Um, they sent us, they sent us some, but we sent them back and said, clean them up. It was kind of a mess, and there was some stuff in there that wasn't even part of your project um, that no one needs. Um, once we have those things turned over, we'll be pretty much complete. We'll get you uh, PDFs and CAD of the actual drawings, so uh, for future use, if anything ever changes or needs to be added on. Um, Warranties are all in place at this point. So if something comes up, you'll be able to reach out to the contractor and deal with that for the next year or so. I think what else there was. May I have misinformed the board. Uh, we are still holding retainage on that. Uh, there's, we still have, yes, there is yeah. still retainage. I think um, I, I mentioned in my memo that we were paying that off, uh, paying out, closing it out, but that, that was incorrect. And, so we'll, we'll still have retainage that will come through in the next one. It should come through should. the next time, yeah. So that was going to be my question on this, um, on our um, budget summary, it looks like. That was, the East edition was $26,000 under what we had budgeted. Is that going to get eaten up that's in retainage, that? retainage, yeah. Okay. Good catch, though. Wow, that's, that's really good. Wah, wah, wah. Okay, <laughs> thank you. So our lives are payment on budget. <laughs> Pretty much. It was pretty close. I, I don't remember the exact number on the changes um, or the ads that they had. Um, yeah, I would say yes. So, you know, I have a question, but I'll let anybody else go first. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions if I ask mine? So, mm -hmm. we, so we got bit because we had a change order that because we thought something for the electric was there and wasn't there. So remember I asked you back when they said, we're going to get some as-is documents, as-built as documents? The record drawings. Yeah. Yes. So we're going to get some as-built documents out of all this? Yes, that, that's what we'll be working on, what we are working on now. Um, contract will deliver those to us, which they've already given us some. We'll update our drawings, um, and then we'll give you CAD and PDFs of of the record drawings of what what we drew but also what changed because there was a couple of changes with piping routes and a few things during the process um all that stuff will be documented and then you guys will have it for for future use all right so when we do the next edition we're hopeful we won't have those surprises about oops you know we have a drawing and then it's not there I mean that. I mean, we That's got the goal. Goal. Yes, well, we yes. got bit by it, so I want to make sure that we're you know fool me once, shame on you, fool me twice. Shame right. Me. Yep. Yeah. The stub ups that were supposed to be there weren't there last time. Yes. The so the goal is that these documents show everything that was done on site um, as accurately as the contractor gives us. Because if they, I don't know, if they say the pipes here and they put it in here, mm -hmm. we don't know that unless we saw it in the field during a site visit. Um, but yeah, it's all supposed to be documented. I guess, Bobby, that'd be the question for right construction. I'm assuming 
you know, we'll get some as-built documents. Yeah, there, there's uh, basically all your structural and MEPs carry as-builds. So once once it's done, about four to six weeks after uh, substantial completion, generally pretty much all we're done with the exception of, you know, fire alarm drawings, uh, low voltage end of things, communication, uh, fire alarm. But yeah, it takes four to six weeks from the time we're, we're done, get that documented for our contractor, get that information back to us. Uh, that's always part of our closeout packet. And ours is very similar. So we're using, um, it's, a, it's a platform called Snow Exchange. So all the RFIs, all the change orders, everything that we've done throughout the life of this project is housed there. And uh, from there, we give you hard copies, but we'll upload everything or just download everything to a, a flash drive for, for you guys and for your use, along with some as-built hard copies for your mechanical room and things of that nature. And yeah, so we'll make, okay. Sometimes we'll give you the red line drawings from the, the super that's on site um, for a bigger project like the high school. Craig has a set um, in a trailer that he marks up. Um, sometimes districts like that just as another set of, of lines to look at. Yeah. I would like to found a storage for those that flash drive because flash drives get lost. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to lose them. So I mean, maybe three. We'll do some sort of cloud based uh, solution where. <laughs> It doesn't get lost. I'd be great. There you go. Can you do that too? All right. I don't have any. Other, I appreciate that. I had to answer that question. I'm sorry. Sure. Anybody ask any questions? So we move to the next agenda. All right. Thank you, guys. So, see you I am the next agenda item. So. You all know that I volunteer for the Tribute to Veterans Memorial. And what it is essentially is it's a granite, a red granite wall on a memorial site. And what it has on it is a list of all Warren County residents who have given the ultimate sacrifice from World War I to present day conflicts. So the ones that basically, you know, so, you know, I was over talking to the city about this, and Gary Rubin was telling the city about it. And Marie Allenbeck said that they're going to have a, a ceremony over there at the um, at the cemetery for some soldiers that were buried over there, and some of those soldiers' names are on the wall. So it's something something near and dear to my heart. It's you know it's a good thing, I think. So anyway, so a couple of years ago they were approached. We were approached as a committee. There's a foundation forward. And a charters of freedom foundation forward is the financial aspect of it but there's a charters of freedom and what they do is each state one time they give they basically for free build a uh, a charters of freedom which basically is, uh, three documents the constitution the declaration of independence and the bill of rights and they put it basically in a, a, a glass case and they, and they make it nice and all that kind of stuff well, that project's coming to fruition at the site, and on Memorial Day, they're going to do a, 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 a dedication. So, Charters for Freedom is running the, the, the dedication ceremony, and what they want us to do is they want us to go to all the various schools, city governments. So, like, Doug, I, I don't think we're on Liberty Christian's um, agenda, but if you could bring it over there, then, you know, they're invited to do this, too. You know, so, so I, I mean... I don't know who to contact over there, so you're it. So, um, but the bottom line here is Holy Rose is gonna get invited. It's all the schools, all the parochial schools, all the public schools, the city governments, Martha, the and the idea is, I don't know if we're gonna do much rather than to show up and listen, but hey, with your permission, I would like to represent Wright City School District. So, you know, that I can put my name on the thing and say, hey, I see school districts here. So I'd like your permission for that. And B, don't feel any obligation whatsoever. No obligation. But if you want to come up Memorial Day and, and listen and listen to both Gary talk about Memorial Day and then also about do this dedication for Charter of Freedom, I know they're going to put a time capsule in there. I am going to attempt to get one of our coins put in there. And so, um, it would be nice, it, you know. I think it's gonna be a nice ceremony. I'll be there, so I'll enter. That's all I have. Um, and fire, I'll entertain any questions at this moment, or we can just move on to the next tonight. Right. So, the one question I do have is 
Is it okay if I represent the right city, our, our two school district at the um, general? You are. Yeah. So is that a yes? Yes. yes. Okay. Thank you. And then other than that, um, if you want to come up, if you have any other questions, just feel free to text me. And then um, if I can't answer the question, I'll get you to Kathy Daly or um, Gary Rubling, and they'll be able to answer. But you should go up there and, and kind of look at it, because right now they're building it, and they're getting to the end. So it's up there by Denny's. Um, so it's, you know, you should, you should probably go up there and look at it. So thank, you thank you for your time. OK, um, next item, Holy Founders out. 24. See you later, guys. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Um, so next board meetings. So Thursday. So what I don't see on it. Okay. So we have the um, where's the June date for this year. Uh, we already did that. You can see the top line about the old things. It says uh, June. Okay. We did this last month. Okay. Okay. So June 4th and June 27th are days that are set in stone. Um, so the question is, we have Thursday, July 18th, which is a regular board meeting. We're also going to do board goals. Everybody okay with that? Okay, I'll just be an agenda item. Then August, we got to set the tax rate, which is a regular board meeting. So we'll actually have two meetings. We'll have the tax rate meeting first, and then we'll have the regular board meeting. Is that the first day of school, or we start on Monday? We start on Monday. We start on the point. Yeah, it's Tuesday. We start on Tuesday. Mm -hmm. Start on Tuesday. And the 19th is the third Thursday then of the month in September. We don't start on Monday. No, because no late start on Monday. Yeah, we all have to jump off of that because it's going to be the very first oh. late start Monday. That's amazing. That's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> we come home from the state fair that Sunday before school starts. <laughs> <That's really hard. laughs> I need a break because it's a break. One day. That's perfect. There you go. I got it. Okay, so we're okay, we're okay with uh, the September dates. October, we're moving it back a week because of the uh, fall conference. And Amy, I guess you'll uh, we'll be at the fall conference this year. And how are you more than welcome to come? Because I think Doug, you went a couple years, didn't you? Several, several times, yeah. Okay. So there's stuff for you to learn there too. So. That would be 17. Uh, November 11, 21. That's the, the week before Thanksgiving. Yeah, a little closer to Thanksgiving, don't you think? When definitely, definitely not my birthday. We have to bring a cupcake for Kyle that day. It's his birthday. <laughs> my birthday is the August meeting. Yeah. Okay. okay, all right. Okay. okay. Wait, your birthday is on the August meeting? It's, um, it's the 28th this year. All right. Nobody so make a note our calendar is that on the August meeting we gotta have cupcake <laughs> no, today no. and the November meeting a cupcake for Kyle. And maybe we'll say happy birthday. That's not <laughs> birthdays are not fun anymore. <laughs> Whatever. It beats the alternative. Fair. Trust me. <laughs> yeah. Um December the 19th, it's a Thursday before Christmas. Then the 23rd. Uh, why did we move that? Why did we move that back a week for this is the one? It worked out really well this year when we moved it back for um, the superintendent hiring, and so it was requested that we do that again uh, because the Christmas break okay. we're in our business department really short on time. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to come back to another topic. So everybody's okay with the week later in January? Mm -hmm. Okay, February, we're good. March, uh, we're moving it back a week due to spring break. <laughs> and then, and I guess that also blue and gold will be will be done then. And then April um, for the board, uh, 14 days after the um, election like we did this year. Okay. And we're gonna get calendar invites for all of those. Yes, that'll be okay. our business tomorrow. Okay, now, I don't know when you wanna discuss it, the issue is, you know, every year we do the superintendent evaluation stuff, and we do that typically in December and January. We can either 
get into the November meeting and then set those dates. Or we can, I don't want to do it tonight because it's kind of far in the future, but we'll, we'll set those dates in November. So Amy, I think the way it works is obviously we have to get you a contract by the end by the January board meeting. So what, as a board, what we do is we get together and we do your stuff, but we do your evaluation at that point. And we'll go through this when we get together. But at, at some point we're gonna have to you know evaluate you and then we'll get together the first, probably the first Tuesday or Thursday after the new year. And then we'll actually write that document up and we'll prove it as a board and you'll get it. And then you'll have your opportunities. Then then we'll when we give it to you, you'll have the opportunities to do your do your thing. And then we will we anticipate then we would offer you the next contract on the the 23rd of 25. So basically that's when we would renew your contract on the 23rd. Is what is what is the way that's going to work. So that that kind of, so you take the 23rd and you start working your way back. And so that's when we'll have all our board meetings and we'll we'll figure that out in a moment. That's okay. I have one question. The, we have meeting dates for the the fourth and the twenty seventh of June. What's what's the twenty seventh date? That's the actual board meeting. So Chris can um, finalize his um, budget, and so we'll go through the budget. And the fourth is the workshop. So if we have any questions about what we want in the budget, we don't want in the budget. Because remember, once something's in the budget, it gives the carte blanche, basically the superintendent, the carte blanche to spend the money on that budget item. So all right. So the 23rd is a normal board meeting, the fourth is a budget workshop. Oh, the 23rd May, yes, sorry. Yeah, yes. May, yes. Okay. All right. I need a motion to approve the following board meeting dates as presented. So moved. Okay. There's a motion, second. Any more discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? I heard six zero. Okay, next one we want to do is uh, programming about uh, blue and gold naming rights. Um, so, any questions on the blue and gold naming rights? I, I was just out of curiosity. Um, do we know how much? Uh, profit was made by the a lot. Google. <laughs> it was a great year. It was Jackie. Jackie was two thousand. Close to forty thousand. Forty thousand. Close to forty thousand. Forty thousand on naming. And oh, wow. no, but I thought the overall profit was overall, overall they did they did they did well. It was the highest year. That's awesome. Yeah. And and um, Kyle and I were kind of talking um with the football field um. I want to make sure that I would like to make sure that Gateway Fiber gets a full year um, for their donation to this. Oh, that's a good catch. Yeah, we will make sure that we do that. Yeah, that's correct. So next year, when we have American Heartland Field, how, how's that going to work with the football field? We no longer be able to offer that stadium and field. The stadium would be named that. We could still sell the components of the. Of the Field, I guess, maybe the, the or the, the stadium like the field. I think there's one thing to offer a lot of time when they put those signs up, they just have the name, and then, you know, it doesn't say it. You know, sometimes they do, but sometimes I was thinking back on the scoreboard about how it's going now at the business, but it didn't have the field or name. But, um, well, I guess, be, I guess before you retire, yeah, there you go. kind of if you make sure that you dot the I's and cross the T's about what we can and can't do for sure. yeah. Blue and Gold next year. Yeah, this guy. I don't want to. I don't want to yeah, contract. I don't want to. I don't want to ruffle any feathers. Mm -hmm. you know? Well, though, in all actuality, though, you should have two more to. I mean, you still have your old football field. You Minnesota still have your field. old baseball field. Mm -hmm. yeah. the, oh, the, yeah, they yeah. still can have a name. Yeah, could have yeah. naming rights and such. Yeah. yeah. Well, I just think, but you know, but it would be nice if he he could button that up before he retires about what we can and can't do at the new high school, so that. That's something Amy doesn't have to look at. I can do that, but all right. All right. Uh, and then how did Justin uh, get persuade you to name this? Uh, no, because I. 
Ms. Thompson is very persistent on um, getting information to her. And every time I called him, I was like, what do you want to name this street? He's like, I have no idea. I was like, well, it's Schwab Street. So it's Schwab Drive. So he was like, fine. Does Justin know this? Yes, he does. Before from yesterday. Does he remember the Lions Club? The hell you guys know him? No, he he's a, he's actually a member of. Uh, I know I so I know him well through the Garrett boys, and he's with Wentzville, but he does help out a couple times throughout the year, and then he's just he's a good graduate. guy. He's a good guy. Yeah, he graduated in uh, 08. I got a story to tell you about him after the meeting. Um, okay, I need a motion to approve the 24-25 naming rights that were won at Blue and Gold. Just present. So move. Second. There's a motion and second. Any questions? Last year, Kyle didn't abstain. Might have been on our. Well, I didn't know if we should do that again. Since well, just abstain. Oh. Yeah, I mean, I am. Yeah, I connected the three of these, so I'm 100 percent okay with that. <laughs> okay. Fine. I mean, it's kind of approved. Yeah. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Abstain. Abstain. Okay, five old ones. Okay. Um, policy a career ladder. I'm sorry. Oh, health and evaluation. wellness is next. So, Dr. Berger, yeah, Jackie's here to give us an overview of the program evaluation. You have the floor, Jackie. Oh, boy. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah, it's, it's the over here. Neither no, the Yeah, that's good. Um, uh, so, our nursing staff is, yeah. Four nurses, one at East West Middle and High School, we have approximately 1,700 students. Um, we provide health care services to our students and staff at the school district. We promote a safe and healthy learning environment and promote academic performance by increasing attendance and be because staying early is dismissible. Right up. Uh, down a little. Yep, that's fine. Um, so district wide, we've had between August and March of this year, 9,500 office visits. We've sent home 200 or 529 um, that we actually decided they were sick and needed to go home. Um, 179, the parents decided they wanted to come pick up their kids. Um, we sent 71 to admin or counselors. Sent three to the hospital and 8,700 went back to class. So we're returning 92% of students to come to the nurse's office back to class. Um, district wide, we have 168 life threatening health conditions. So this would be like asthma, diabetes, seizures, um, allergies. We have 339 behavioral health disorders, so depression, anxiety, things like that, ADHD. Uh, you can scroll down. This is a breakdown of each school. So at East, person kindergarten, she has 276 students. She saw 1879, sent home 209 students. Um, she has 31 life-threatening health conditions, seven mental health disorders. She does two daily medication administrations. She has 16 students with inhalers, five EpiPens, 31 PRN medicines, so students that have and needed meds. Um, Jackie, can I ask a question? Yeah. Um, so on, I just want to make sure that yeah. I'm reading your chart right. So behavioral mental health, that seven kiddos that um, have a diagnosed condition, or is that seven instances of a kiddo having um, having a hard time at school and visiting the nurse for diagnosis? Okay. okay, okay, thank you. You're welcome. Um, Quest Elementary, she has 542 students. She's seen 3,459. Sent home 90, um, returned to class 3,300. She has 43 life threatening health conditions, 74 behavioral or mental health conditions. She has 15 daily meds, 20 albuterol or inhaler or nebulizer orders. 
Elizabeth, can you scroll down? Um, okay, at the middle school, I have seen 2,675 students. I've sent home 131. Um, for a German class, 2,489. I've sent two to the hospital. I have nine 504 plans in place, 52 life threatening conditions, 100, 110 behavioral or mental health conditions. I do have 11 daily meds, seven inhaler or nebulizer orders, five EpiPen orders, and five PRN medications. What does PRN stand for you? Um, as needed. Like okay. if they take it in the morning at home or then they forget, they can come and take it with me. You scroll down a little bit. At the high school, um, Donna has seen. 1500 office visits. She sent home 99. She sent one to the hospital and returned to class uh, 1342. She has 25 504 plans, 42 life threatening conditions, 148 behavioral or mental health conditions. She has four daily medications, 10 inhalers, four EpiPens, and seven PRN medications. May I ask a follow-up question? Yeah. Yeah. So again, just so I understand correctly, when we say behavioral and mental health conditions, mm -hmm. those are visits to the nurse office with students that have a diagnosed behavioral or mental health condition. Those are students in the building with diagnosed conditions that are shared with us that we know about. Okay. So not necessarily an office visit. Not necessarily an office visit. Correct. So that number is representative of the student population or their visits to the office. <clears throat> uh, the 148 is just demographic. Okay. Not. So you're telling me, so the 599 students in the high school, or what was that number? 599? 550. 550. 550. 150. 148 of them have a have a diagnosis from a doctor. Mm -hmm. wow. That's a, that's a 25%? I mean, that is shocking. That's shocking. <laughs> is that like a normal breakdown for the schools across the state, or how is that comparative? Um, so we share this data with the state of Missouri each year, and then they send us like the state of Missouri, we're pretty much yeah. right there with everybody. Because you said that's going to include not only anxiety and depression, but ADD, ADHD, what other kinds of? Um, like ODD, so yeah, OCD, just any of the, yeah, any of those. Um, so our vision screening. We do vision and hearing screenings at East, West, and the middle school, um, and we would do it at the high school if they have a referral. Um, so at East, we screened 257 students this year. Three of them got referrals, and three of them are receiving treatment. At West, she screened 249 with 34 referrals, 22 receiving treatment. I have screened 118 so far at the middle school. Um, I still have four seventh graders that I need to complete, um, and she did not do any screenings at the high school. Um, so hearing screenings, at East she did 255, zero of them needed referrals, uh, 249 at West with one referral, uh, and I've done 118 so far um, at the middle school. Our dental program. We um, partner with Big Smiles Dental. They come to our schools and do uh, dental visits for our students. This year um, at East, they saw 28 students, 84 at West, 22 at the middle, and nine at the high school. Uh, we do annual training with staff, um, asthma, allergy. 
diabetes seizures. This year we have to do the extra seizures training for the state of Missouri, and we all have to be certified for that. And you still have an Narcan? We still have an Narcan, yeah. How do you get trained on that? Uh, it's an online training here in the state of Missouri. So you do, so, but you do it. Mm -hmm. Have you had to use it? We have not. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Jackie, I still I think we yeah. have a new a new hire, a nurse coming in to work with early childhood and then also uh -huh. is, is that a new position? A it new is a new position, position yeah. Okay. So have you, um, if the early childhood center has had any needs for nursing, have you been working with I've them? Been, yeah, I've been, yeah, I've been going over there. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then next year, so we had previously been working with um, IHRA at Mobile Vision Clinic. Next year, we will have this um, Kids Vision for Life coming and they like, provide free vision screenings and eye exams and glasses for our students who need them. I, I noticed in here um, and um, heard from my high schooler, um, I love that our health occupation students are taking part and getting to um, be part of the screenings um, mm -hmm. for our littles. I think that's such a neat opportunity for them to get involved and get some like actual um, day in the life kind of stuff. So yeah. very cool. Thank you for involving them. Absolutely. They also do clinicals in West and East office too, throughout the year. Any questions? Very good, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you for the report. Okay, that was just informational. Um, how the update and reviews? Right. You mean career right. ladder? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you about this we got that now. vision <laughs> check over here. <laughs> he uh, warned me about this and I was trying to skip over it. Dr. Berger. Yeah, pro, uh, sorry, uh, career ladder evaluation and plan approval and related to Dr. White. Yeah, so right now we are finishing up year two of career ladder and just kind of a quick history. Um, when we started, we do have three different stages um, or levels. Stage one is a $1,500 stipend for 50 hours, and you have to complete it two years of teaching experience in Missouri public schools. Stage two, $3,000 stipend, 75 hours, and three years of experience. And then stage three, uh, $5,000, 100 hours, and five years of experience. If you go to the program of Val up top there, you can see that we had 138 of our teachers eligible. 67 took us up on the option. Uh, it's roughly around 49%. Uh, Elizabeth, if you kind of go to page two where the yeah, where it says career ladder statistics, the participants, um, kind of first tables there. Yeah, if you look, I just tried to put last year's and this year's together. We had 60 uh, teachers enrolled last year. We have 67 this year. As you can see in the next table where it talks about the different levels, uh, level three is by far our biggest level. Uh, we had 41 of our 67 in that level this year. Um, if you go down to the next table, it talks about financial costs. Last year, we were running for the district around 136,000 um, that it cost the district. This year, we're anticipating 149,000 will cost us. Um, last year, we kind of did like a career ladder breakdown on hours and percentages. And so we kept that in here. Um, if you scroll down one more, that was last year. If you scroll down another one, uh, you can kind of see our anticipated breakdown this year. Um, Last year, we had three goals kind of at the bottom. Our first goal was to try to get up to 51% of our career ladder hours in that face-to-face -face instruction. Um, when we talked about last year, I didn't think we could get up to 51 right off the bat, but last year we were at 22, this year we're at 37, so an increased 15%. Um, our success ready went from 2% to 6%. Um, and then our other categories like co-curricular, Certification and committees went down a little bit, obviously. Um, and so in our goals for last year, 
Um, I put not completed because obviously we didn't get to 51%. Uh, I think we, we had a 15% increase, so we jumped up. Um, for goal number two, where it talks about success ready, yes, we did improve, but going from 2% to 6%, I just put partially completed. Uh, we did do a better job and completed uh, having a timeline and stuff for our teachers and administrators. Um, but moving forward, I didn't make goals for this year because I felt like um, we still didn't accomplish goal one and two. So we're going to be working on that next year to get closer to that or achieve that goal of 51%. Um, if you remember when we do any kind of surveys with our teachers or I'm asking the hallways, you know, we're going to keep career ladder. That's definitely something on their mind. I've been asked that quite a bit in the last month or so. Um, obviously, it depends on state um, making sure that money is available and our board agreeing with that as well. Um, but we would like to continue it for next year um, and, and see if we can achieve some of those goals from last year. So I have a question. Um, goal two, so what would have been the objective increase percentage-wise that would have made that completed instead of partially completed? Yeah, I would say my goal is to try to get that up to like 15 or 20 percent. I don't think it's ever going to be as high as like the face-to-face, -face, and I don't think we want that to be. There's not as many opportunities, but I didn't do a good job of putting like a, a number behind that. Okay. Maybe but, that's something we could revise for year three is yep. put an objective number in there so we can look for, I mean, obviously we can see we had a 15 percent um, for the top one. And we can see how much of that chunk we took out to get the 51 I, I would like to see it more than the certification of the committees and those kind of average around 10 to 15 percent so kind of that yep i can change that uh, um i um i am i i guess i'm honestly disappointed that there's not more uh, or a higher percentage of the folks that are getting a you know a good chunk of change through um through career ladder that aren't for taking in the face-to-face -face instruction um, with um, tutoring our kiddos and providing that extra support. And so I would really like to see an emphasis on that. Um, I know, you know, as you said, we're, we haven't hit that goal, um, but uh, I would be very hesitant to continue to approve plans of folks um, that are not completing what what our intention is for this well gotcha. if the program is multifaceted mm -hmm. we can't right. discount the other categories we can't but but i'm i'm just saying my um for this much money i'm concerned about student achievement and if we get that through face-to-face -face interactions with okay. kiddos and tutoring and such that's um face-to-face -face instruction is my um would be my goal and i'm one of seven so Aaron, as you see on there, I mean, co-curricular clubs and sports and tutoring, those are always going to be our top two. Mm -hmm. When you think about, like, I think our board's put an emphasis on letting our kids have as many opportunities as possible. Mm -hmm. And one of the big things that is behind these numbers is fifth grade camp. You know, we, we put an emphasis on having that. Some teachers can get 32 hours just with fifth grade camp. So if it's something that we, we value and want to continue, I'm afraid if we take that away, some of that, that we might lose out on some of our people participating. In that. So how do we how do we increase the amount of opportunities for that, for the face-to-face -face instruction? Last year, or after the first year, we've kind of put in some numbers where we capped out some of those categories like certification, committees, and that I think would be something that we'd have to get with our new administrators and talk about this summer about how we could revamp that to even cap some of those areas a little more, which would make you, um, force you into doing some more of the tutoring okay. to get to those numbers. Okay. That's one option. Okay. Yeah, those are great working documents. We, we said not necessarily the board, I'm talking about the administrative level, we talked about that being a working document uh, to kind of give us some guidance, but that, that's a great idea. The other thing that was talked about nuts and bolts today was and this may not this may be a little more of a reach recognizing that i'll preface saying preface the whole issue by saying that uh but some things that were really you know, we were needing participants in the classic example fifth grade camp mm -hmm. could there potentially be carve outs you know that we would say that is you know there's this indirect line to student mm -hmm. performance social emotional learning you know but once we do that mm -hmm. 
then it's you know you, you've you've made a gray area, mm -hmm. and uh, we could have participants lobbying for more gray areas. But there are also through that discussion maybe some very clear gray areas that we want to accept. We said that's it, we'll hold the line, and those can be incorporated into that working document. Does um, summer school play into this? Summer school play to it. It would, but we don't have anybody doing that because it they'd rather get the money. Right? Okay. Okay. Oh, you can't double that. Yeah. Right. Gotcha. But okay. that's that would be that would be the one. Okay. Thank you. And this would go further against what you're just saying. I apologize. But wasn't there some discussion at the state level or something on expanding what career ladder hours could be used for, or am I just remembering something that was made up in my head? Nothing's um, ringing in real hard, but I wouldn't have. I swore I saw something, yeah. but I could be wrong. Yeah. Anything come to your mind that way? No, I mean, we've had discussion with some of the things coming up, like especially with the high school, you know, Brooks has approached me and said, hey, can we tweak some stuff to, like, there's going to be a lot of movement of people and things. Is that possible in Career Ladder? And I'm like, I don't know if that really fits into our goal of face-to-face -face instruction, people moving their stuff from one building to another, you know, or, yeah. Can I just say, we yeah. had a student experience study group, uh, and one thing students talked about were uh, some more opportunities. Well, you know, there were some kids that were really in the bad men, right? And we kind of, we started talking about this, how it could be intramurals, sports and activities. Uh, and that would be, and as you talked to them, I thought, oh gosh, I, I wouldn't have been reading that before, but since it came out that way, you know, that was it kind of driven by them. One of the things they mentioned is something that could improve their experience. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm all about for student experience. I just, yeah. I just don't want, I don't want that to get lost. Yeah. Mary? Any other questions? Dave? Yeah. Okay, are you comfortable with approving this, Aaron? Yeah. Okay. I need a motion to to approve the 24-25 career ladder plan. So moved. Second. There's a motion and a second. Any more discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? I heard six zero. See, I wanted to get the policy, so I love policy so much. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, so we're going to go through these individually. Um, and then we can ask questions. And I know that uh, Beth, and, um, Beth and Kyle had some additional questions they wanted to bring up. So I'm gonna let them lead that conversation um, in, in general stuff. But um, so anything on anything additional before we get to Beth and Kyle on GCDA? One more. Uh, GCBA was just changing the grades for the yeah. Okay, so and Western Middle School. Cool. Okay, anything on GDBA? Anybody have any questions on? Okay, GCBDA, and then uh, I'm going to skip the EH. I'm going to talk about that one, and then um, JGDBDA. I know that goes with the C one. Sorry, did you were you saying were you trying to say J H C D or J no, the G D B B D A? So I know you have had that issues. No, it's the last one. Okay, so so let's talk about that right now. So do you have any questions on this particular policy you want to bring up to? Which one is it you're bringing up now? The G D B D A. Okay. Support right. we'll staff have, leave. We'll, we'll have the uh, support staff leave. Pull that up to Mary for your. Okay. There's okay. GDBBA. Okay. So Beth and Kyle, I know you all had an email on this. So yeah, no, Beth and I talked a little bit. I think the I think my my last thing, and you know, I'll wait with it. But in one second, let me get there. I think it's page five, the last paragraph. So 
the last sentence, the second and third day for given days will be non working pay days, full time, nine month support staff, all for given days beyond the third days will be non paid, non working days. So I, I understand that there was a concern regarding FMLA um, or, or the labor laws, but I guess I, I don't understand how days one, two, and three can be forgiven non working pay days, but beyond the third day, it's non paid, non working. If I do, I recall that that was something that came out of um, AMI days when um, when we or AMI or one one of the crazy years that we ended up maybe it was Relates COVID or something, or something. We ended up reducing the calendar, and I think that was um, I remember that coming out of that discussion that we would pay three days and then um not any not anymore if we had to shorten the calendar i know dr way is chopping at the bit of there but nice deflection there at this point on this i know i think Aaron is right i think it was the year before you came we had a lot of days that we had to give up and so we came up with that policy on there and um and so, yeah, and, and when I talked with like uh, Veronica, you know, obviously, like Kyle said, we want to make sure that we're paying people hourly for the work they're actually doing. And so if they don't do the work and we continue to pay them for not doing the work, it just doesn't go well. So, yeah, but I, I, I do agree with Aaron. I think that was after that year. And I think it was before you, like the year before yeah, you started. Later, yeah. The year after we shut schools down, that's part. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well. Yeah, and I and I understand that, and this is around inclement weather. Um, I, I guess my my personal struggle, and again, I'm one of seven. The the sister policy to this for professional staff pays them out regardless of how long they're out of school or work, I should say, for inclement weather, and it just doesn't sit well with me that we're going to pay our support staff for three days, but then after that it's nothing i would like to see them mirrored and if the if the response is well it has to do with the labor laws and paying folks who aren't at work why is it okay for the first three days but nothing after that so my comment on that would be the biggest difference between the c and, the, and the, this policy is the individuals covered under the gc policy are solid contracted I and mean, contracted versus these individuals are at will employees and again, that to me, that's the biggest difference. I mean, I appreciate your your concern. However, you know, and I don't know what that difference. I'm not a lawyer, and I don't tend to be one. And maybe we should, you know. But the idea would be that would be my questioning is the fact that one's hourly and the other one's salary. Because because if the the salary employees. How, what do you do then? Do you just say, well, we got a contract, and the contract says that we sign them that says you get X amount of dollars per year, and then now you can't, you know, not do it. So, so before we go down the rabbit hole, I think Jeremy wants to. The only other thing I want to add is I think, Kyle, why we came up with those days is because that one year, if you notice every year in our schedule, we stop school and then we have like Memorial Day and then we have like two or three days and sometimes we only have two or three days where we start summer school and I think it was like hey we can't double dip those people like we pay them for days they're not working plus we're paying them for summer school too I think that had something to do with it it's so tight yeah. at the end of the year and I appreciate that background um but Austin now before we go too down the rabbit hole yeah if the professional staff or professional why would we even need a policy for implement whether if they're gonna get paid their salary regardless well, if we can see that there is a difference between the contract and employee, and I don't want to get in yeah. front, and I am default in the journal, unless he's been he's been around point, and I know you guys have had great discussions on this, but if we can see the point that a contract employee has a property right, and that's that's you know that's hard law, uh, and the hourly employee is a right to work employee, and hourly of course, mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't mean that you wouldn't you don't have the ability to pay out the uh, the non-certified, non-contracted employee. It just means that if the certified is a given, right? Correct. Yeah. And so now the board would 
like in those scenarios, take that other issue up with the non-certified. And I, I get where the board's at, the, you know, the kind of this hard spot here is you want to be very careful with taxpayer dollars and not just give anybody anything. Uh, yet, in our unique industry, contracted employees, you have to be sensitive of contracted and non-contracted employees because when we consider them, they're the same. But there are some intricacies that make them different. And so, uh, I, and I think we've proven uh, that with, with the policies that, that at least in, I know forever, but certainly in the last four years when we, when we can be employee friendly, when those decisions come to the board, whether they're certified or non-certified, we're employee friendly. Education's the most employee friendly uh, industry on, on the planet. Uh, so I think that, that you would still have the opportunity, even if it's not laid out in, in the policy, if that helps. It does. I mean, it does. And I, and I understand it's, it's a sensitive, you know, balance. I think, you know, something that helps me get off this is that I don't think there's so many instances where school is out for more than three consecutive days due to inclement weather right. um, that happened. Especially with AMI, right? You infuse a few well, hoses. Yeah. Hold on. Yes. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, yeah. You didn't yeah. have to bring that yeah. up. With other options. With other options. I mean, I like the three more than none. Um, and I just, it, it still doesn't sit the best with me that there's an instance where they can be without pay while their coworkers are getting paid because of different classification. Are you recommending that we change the policy or are you just, uh, so what recommendation are you making? Are you just venting? I mean, I would love to see it identical, but I'm also leveling myself to reality here that, you know, there are, there are different employee categorizations. We're probably not out of school too often for more than three consecutive days. It's just, it doesn't read great. Would, I mean, could we, um, the, the practice in all reality is that if this were to happen, that's going to come to the board or not or if could we put something in there that would say in this instance if this were to happen you know it can come to the board for whatever but i mean at any point we can do that correct i think it was like an act of god or something you guys would be involved and would say hey here's our recommendation do you want to bypass the policy and go with xyz yeah the calculus always is uh, also, uh, part of it is because of whatever the scenario was, whether it be COVID or just typical inclement weather, does it impact funding? Mm -hmm. And DESE has never had an impact on funding. It's not going to set a, a, a impact your local revenues, and it's not going to, at least DESE has never had a time. And if it did, if we were in such financial dire straits, that would change the view of this, you know, because now we're dealing with limited, more limited public dollars. So uh, point being, it's going to come back to the board, and uh, you'll also be informed with that. It's an impact. Now, whenever I say does it impact dollars, it might it might impact like uh, food service dollars because if we're netting money per meal, that it would be a nominal amount. Wouldn't impact the, the major revenue drivers that you would be assured of that if it comes back to the board, as opposed to making it autocratic through policy. You okay? Yeah, no, I'm fine. I was just thinking out loud and talking through it. I have a lot of time there. Okay, then JHCD, does anybody have any issues with that one? And then the artificial intelligence one, uh, I'd like to talk about this one. So in one of the paragraphs up here, um, it talks about PII. I forget where exactly that is here. Uh, it's down, but also do a, a search for it. Uh, you're getting close going down, I think. I'm not saying that, yeah. So I'd like to add uh, PHI as also because PHI is personal health information. 
And I don't, you know, if the policy does say med medical information, employee medical information, student education records, but PHI is um, more specific and, and more aligns with HIPAA, I think. So I'd like to run that by MSBA that essentially says, hey, we would like to specifically call out PHI personal health information. And, and my, my reasoning is that are we ready to well, we're getting there. We're getting there okay. second time. Okay. Right. That, that, okay. That, that's that's yeah. awesome because the question is, are we ready to adopt this? So that, that, that's okay. going to be the second question I'm going to bring up. But, you know, but I want to go back to MSB with all the questions we're going to have. So does anybody have any great concerns about adding PHI as part of that territory? I don't have questions to the policy language itself. Okay. And, and I do too. Um, so the next thing is, um, so Chris and I were talking about this. And the way Chris couched this to me was this is more of a framework of, of how you would go about developing procedures for AI. And, and, my, and my question was, are we even prepared to do it? And if we decide to adopt this policy, then we're going to have to probably put money in the budget to train somebody so that we we actually can do this and do it well. I mean, because we're not gonna this is gonna be a multi-year thing where we're not gonna we're not gonna be able to, to stand up and do this immediately. So and I had great concerns about adopting this thing tonight, you know, without all of our questions being answered. You know, I was we'll be talking about postponing this particular one to next month, you know, to to see if you know if there's anything else. So what other concerns do you all have with this policy? And let's start, I'm Don, so we'll start with Beth and work our way down. Beth, do you have any additional concerns about this particular policy? No, I'm not in a minute, but I don't right now. I don't um, my only question is we, we do three readings, so we do we have to postpone it till the next one or can it, we just revisit it in the next reading? We can revisit it, but I, it was my understanding once we approve it, it goes into effect and then the reading can just modify it. I'm not so sure I want this policy, even if I even want this policy. I mean, I don't know if we know enough. You know, I mean, so here's how, I mean, this generative AI, for the first time this year, I had to do it, uh, a class at work on AI. And basically to make sure we get the ethical use of it that we ethically use it and stuff like that and all the unethical stuff that we don't you know don't want to do and, and i i took i took that class i'm going all right you know but i i still wasn't comfortable with you know you know because you can do a lot with ai and i just don't know if if we're if we know what we're getting into that's that's one of the but we can certainly you know Think about it and see what Kyle and Aaron have to say, and then go from there. Do you have anything else, Mary? Before we uh... no, you know this. This isn't my area of expertise. Not mine either. <laughs> Kyle, what, what concerns do you have about adopting this policy? I just have apprehension of you know adapting it all this year. I, you know. Sorry, Dr. Berger, but you'll be retiring soon. Dr. Salvo, um, do you have any concerns with such a policy being approved and having to designate and find an AI coordinator and getting all these ducks laying in a roll in your first 100 days? Uh, yes, actually, um, I had a chance to meet with them uh, earlier and I kind of shared that. Um, I'd rather have a person designated in advance know even what training is out there before mm -hmm. we put that in place because there's policy we have to follow it um, with fidelity um, and even I think training our faculty and staff our administrative teams um, I'd rather feel confident and well equipped that we're able to handle it to have a policy in place I'd rather have time to have a framework and do due diligence with professional development as a leadership team um, I would not want to set somebody up to fail to be the coordinator or to leave this out when, honestly, I don't know what training is even available. I would like to know 
what conferences even have specific training for this so we can equip the person to be able to leave it out um, correctly. Thank you for that. Um, yeah, Austin, it, I can appreciate where MSBA is coming from on this and trying to be an early adapter to you know managing AI as we move forward. It's definitely been one of their top priorities this year, but I just, I think for us, we could probably table this for 12 months. And I'm also still not sold on there being no um, fiscal note associated with this as well to our, to our budget. That's all I have. Um, I'm not ready um, to put a policy when we don't have, like Dr. Salvo said, we don't we don't have any of the information. And I understand that it's a framework, but again, once it's in policy, we're we're supposed to be adhering to it. And I um, I'm always concerned with unintended consequences of having something in writing that we're not really quite sure how it's all going to shake out yet. Um, so I would prefer to just um, not look at this in this set of policies that we're going to um, move forward with. I would like to retract this one. So the thing I didn't see is the the AP1 associated with it. Did they even have an AP1 with this one? Yeah. They did. Uh, typically, the board doesn't uh, review IPs or administrative forms. Uh, so that it would be a blank slate that needs a lot of work on it. So is that is that what they provided was the, uh, the blank slate? They yeah, want yeah they provided anything. Well, well, just what to, just out of curiosity, what is what more, it say? more framework, but apply you know uh, establishing a coordinator, uh, working with the which would be uh, cyber protection coordinator, but they call it officer CPO. That almost sounds like you gotta hire somebody else because I don't like we have a chief security officer. And I would, you know, yeah, I, I think it's clear that the board is not ready for that. So, and I respect that completely. You know, and the I was, you know, we have a lot of coordinators. I'm not, I'm going to hope, but certainly AI is so unknown. Who knows? I was looking through here real briefly uh, on the coordinators we have, and uh, the most unusual was a integrated pest co coordinator. And this is the model MSDA policy. We probably didn't even know we. Have one. I don't know who that is, but MSBA school districts have one at least in policy. So uh, perhaps it will grow, and AI has the potential to certainly grow. So I think it's wise uh, to slow play this, uh, and perhaps it will be another thing we do. Uh, but we'll see. But we certainly need more feedback from MSBA. We do have an email out to them that's uh, pending, so we'll at least get that back. And go ahead and provide that follow up uh, from the Board of Education. And then it sounds like, at least on that policy, you'd like that with the regular tranche that comes with what we have for the legislative session. So, all the implications of the legislative session, typically, uh, MSB will send something out, but it will be probably mid summer or very early fall for them to come back out to you. There is a webinar coming up on Tuesday, April 23rd. And um, it's uh, AI in education, legal and policy considerations. Oh, that's so, an interesting so we could, uh, someone could definitely, or someone or some. What kind of day people, is that? What kind of day is that? Uh, it's from 12 to 1. April 23rd. April 23rd. Oh, you Austin. If you can, if you can look it up on. I knew that I had heard something about. There was something coming up. I actually they've had a couple of them. Uh, actually, there was one today, and it looks like there's one every Tuesday at noon. Uh, so um, anyway, someone might want to sit in on that. Do they record those where we can view them at our mm -hmm. leisure? That I don't know, uh, but uh, it's on the website, and so I was looking on here free webinar ser series on. Uh, AI, so. All right. Well, if I don't have a lunch meeting, that, that might be something I can do. Um, so here's my recommendation. I think let's postpone policy EHBD until next month. That's so we can postpone it to next month. Let's have that motion. And then the other and all the other policies, approve them as presented. Does anybody agree with that? 
the only clarification I would need is so I was suggesting, and that's that's fine if you want to revisit this next month. Do you want this in the normal tranche of policy updates? That way you're addressing policy all as one agenda item as opposed to breaking it up. Can you repeat that? What? Well, okay, so the legislative session will end, right? And then yeah. all the implications of the legislative yeah. session, MSBA takes all that and revises policy. And then they send us out a big batch of yeah. policy. It's the, it's the largest one. Right. This is all from just policy review. Okay. These are just policy review internal policy, policy review. They sent this one out as a standalone, which is odd in itself. And we are conject it's conjecture, but we think it's because this, uh, Melissa Randolph, Randall, Randall mm -hmm. thank you. Melissa Randall has a high interest in artificial intelligence, mm -hmm. uh, much like our board president does. And uh, we think they sent that out as a, as a standalone because of the kind of her priority. Mm -hmm. And I bet she's got a lot of feedback from members uh, regarding that. But to get back to my question is, do you want this to come back to you next month? Uh, I'm not sure. I know we're going to watch this webinar. We're going to try to educate ourselves. Or if MSBA indicates that this isn't a timely thing, and I don't think it was, I think they sent this out there kind of trying to answer the membership uh, call of, we don't know anything about ANI. Give us a frame. Mm -hmm. uh, or would it be okay to give this, offer this up when we get those big policy mm -hmm. reviewed um, to take on that? And, and I don't care either way. I, I'm okay with it coming with the big policy updates. So you, you all remember that. We're I don't want it. you to have to tackle a board policy, you know, all you know, peaceful. Might be more because policy a review committee with um, you guys also, you don't want that. They do not convene for the policy that comes out from MSBA. Is that accurate? Okay. Yeah. Only during the fall. Okay. Yeah. So to this point, in October, November, we're going to get a board agenda where there's a bunch of policies in it because of what they, you know, what, what passed and didn't pass in Jeff City is going to impact this policy. So we, we can wait till then, or we can do this next month. I think we should wait until then. All right. That makes sense. All right. Couldn't agree more. Okay. So we're going to postpone policy EHBD until the standard MSBA policy updates. Okay. So that's the motion we're going to do that one. So can I have that motion, please? So moved. Second. Okay, there's a motion and second. No, Any more discussion? Really figure out how to work. <laughs> <laughs> so she gets paid no uh, Any more? Any more discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Uh, uh, okay. Now I need a motion to approve all the other policies, sans EHBD, as presented. So moved. Second. second. There's a motion and second. Any more discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? I heard six zero. Okay. CSIP reports. So I'm gonna I have a question for each of the principals because it's CSIP. So and I warned them up front. So we have some uh testing coming up for states, some state testing. How prepared are we? And any concerns? So we'll start with Don. I don't think you're impacted by that. Either. We'll help get them ready. All right. Setting the table. Yeah. We're yeah, setting the foundation. We're doing great. <laughs> At West, I, I feel good. I mean, obviously, you're, you're never going to feel 100 like everything's in the bag. Uh, we're in the process of that two two and a half weeks of uh, addressing the last uh, April value standards that uh, there were some gaps. So I mean, I feel good. I feel confident. Um, but I wouldn't bet my house on anything, right? Well, I think I think this. So the question here is, you know, we do evaluate, and that's supposed to help us predict how well or not well we're going to do. And so, so your so you know where our gaps are, and we're attempting to get those addressed between now and. No, yeah, that's what we're all really good at. That's what we do in our buildings. We find those gaps and we address them, and okay. hope they're closed by the time we sit down for the mayor. Okay. Kayla, how are you feeling? I feel good. We currently have our special um, groups going, our small groups, and they're walking in confident, they're walking out confident. So that kind of sets a really good tone um, currently for our team. Um, also, our impact teams have also uh, dove into our April evaluate data and identified those low hanging fruit standards that we feel our kids can do really well on. We just didn't necessarily perform well on the April evaluate. And as a whole building, including our um, elective teachers, are finding ways to address those in the classroom. So 
Yeah. So, so I got an extra, an extra question for you. Mm -hmm. So with evidence based uh, as trial basis in your building, mm -hmm. are we going to be able to measure how well that did versus not, or is it just going to be too? No, too I think we are going to be able to look at whenever we dive into our map data and find strong correlations between our standard data and our grade books to the data we receive back on the map test. So, but, so, so we'll be able to, and we'll be able to, because we know which students had evidence based and which ones didn't. Yeah, all students received evidence based and uh, math. ELA and social studies. So in the areas of math and ELA, we receive math scores on that. I think we'll be able to look at correlated questions per standard to our standard data. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you're confident we'll be able to tell whether or not this is working or not and yes, sir. what tweaks we're going to have to make. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Fair enough. Matt? I'm very confident that math, our numbers on evaluate, we were 8% higher than we were last year with assignment units. We have outstanding achievement. Um, ELA was a little lower. It's always been that way on Evaluate. That's why I included some of those numbers along with what we've had on the EOCs uh, in those years. Um, you know, we're down a little bit. Two years ago, we were at the same number, which was down a little bit, and we had a strong performance uh, on the EOC. I know that they did the practice test, and I don't have the final results, but I know overall, um, Mr. Wallace and Steady were really pleased with how our kids did on that. I hope to have practice tests and data on everybody for next month, uh, but we've also started our student small group testing. And a lot of that, especially math, they're sitting around our, our threshold, I shouldn't say threshold, our goal that we had of 20% performance on those, uh, which a lot of times state average on those is about 50 on those student groups. And math was stronger than ELA, um, especially when you started thinking about our EL students uh, in ELA, which, yeah, it's kind of trended that way, but overall, I'm very confident about where our results are. The fact that we use the heat map data with every group for our government, for our bio as well. So we have somewhat of a standards approach or focus on standards that we didn't do as well on to try to improve those for this year. We'll see how that pays dividend. I told you uh, there was a little bit, I, it was a little clunky in how it was let out. That was a, a leadership thing, but uh, I think it's valid for us to use it. I think that's going to improve as we have more experience with it. So, oh, that was a lot, uh, but I'm confident. Right. <laughs> and then, Doug, have you been in contact with Kelly about our special populations and stuff like that? I think she's confident. I mean, we have been going up in those areas every year over the last three years. I think there's no reason to think that that trend's not going to continue in all grade levels. And that's a good strength for us. And then, is there anything else you'd like to add to what the principal said in terms of? What our readiness is? No, I, I have a lot of faith in these people. They have proven themselves to do great work in the past, and I have no doubt that it's going to be another good year. Sorry, I, I, I wanted to ask this question. So, uh, any other questions on the um, CSIP reports, Beth? No, I don't have anything. Um, I. Going into testing, I just I always struggle with how long it takes the state to give us results back. Yeah. As board members, so much how can we have <laughs> it's so much better than it used to be? It used to be almost a year. That's insane. <laughs> really stuff will come in in July. Usually in July, I, I had just uh, I was I was sharing some documents with uh, Dr. Broadway Yates earlier today in, in my letter that I have to send out to every parent when we get the results back. Was mailed out in in the middle of July of this past year. So, okay. um, usually that by the time that we can start doing those presentations, it's usually the September board meeting. Because what we end up getting back in July is just some raw data, and there's nothing comparative. So we can look at our numbers and percentages and say, you know, this percentage of our kids achieved advanced or proficient, but without a benchmark of what other schools or other districts have done, it's kind of meaningless because those numbers shift throughout the year. You know, one year you could be at 42% of your kids above, you know, advanced proficient, but then it's 45, the next year 42 is above. So, it, it, you know, until you get to like September when you have that comparative data, you know, the raw data doesn't mean a lot. 
it's good for us to know and it's good for us to look at, but you, know, you really can't quantify it. Aaron? Uh, I, I don't I don't have anything. I, I can't imagine um, how you guys feel with all the work that you do all year because I know like map time, I'm like, yes, see, because, you know, this is the, the best part is getting to watch the reports that you guys do for us every month and watching our kids grow. And uh, so I'm always really excited um, this time of year, too. So, yeah. And I, I forgot to ask Dr. Berger a question. So obviously we're highly dependent on the technology because the kids have to be able to use the computers or whatever. So from a techno technological perspective, uh, the district's ready and we're not and so that you know then all this technological glitches that we're gonna happen already. Because that I mean I mean we could the kids could do the best in the world, but the technology fails us and we're kind of in the world occur. Well especially the internet and stuff like that. So there's always the unexpected them for saying but yeah we're ready. We're, we're, we're in good shape at all on all on all levels. I forgot Andrew was sitting there. <laughs> I didn't even have to look at it. We get it. <laughs> all right. Okay. Uh, we consent agenda. I looked at the re uh, employment report. Is anybody related to anybody? Mm, no, but you should pull C. <laughs> okay, you're going to pull item C. That's fine. And anybody, anything else in here? All right. So nobody's related to anybody. All right. Okay, you want to pull item C? Okay, because I okay, I see why. Thank you. All right. So, anything else you might want to pull? Okay, I need a motion to approve the consent agenda. Sands item C. So moved. Second. There's a motion and second. Any more discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? I heard six zero. Kyle, what's your concern with item C? I just need to approve everything besides Mackenzie and that approver. Same. Okay, so same not McKenzie. One. Okay, so give me the individuals. Madison Love. Madison Love. Okay, and Kyle, just McKenzie. Yes. Is there somebody else that I'm missing? <laughs> well, I, I don't know. So you know, I did. I just want you know. I don't. I mean, well, you're, you're, you're related to the Vegas, so you got forty-five thousand dollars of those. <laughs> is Jacqueline on? Well, we determined that Jacqueline is. Not very good. beyond the, the separate, yeah. Okay. I have some questions about it though. Go. <clears throat> Excuse me. On your on the far right, you have steps, right? Like there, uh, for example, Fred Ross is 17 on that step. Yeah, you but, but you go down lower and it's not 17. Why is that? Oh, because that's the number of years you had in that position or whatever. So it's just that position that that coaching position yeah so he's coached more in one sport than the other oh i thought that's how their pay was based am i right or wrong but doesn't it go by their teaching step and not their coaching step is there a coaching step with a percentage of yeah, yeah. salary right well, well yeah that's what i mean though yeah 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 i think that it, I think it has to be again like how many years he's in there, but I, I can double check because, like you said, down there in softball, he's 24. And yeah, and then in another spot, he's like six or 17 for so that's some summer open well, gyms. We yeah. may not have had summer open gyms, all those years of that, or he may have had someone, he may have had someone well, else doing that work for him some of that time, you know, like in wrestling, we've only had wrestling six years. Well, so I. I also, some of these people aren't on the like they're not they're I mean, they're out of district. So yeah, I know Tony's out of district. So how how you yeah? So how are you paying him? If he's three years, what what salary schedule are you basing him on? There's a if you look at it's it's based on a percentage of the just the far left column of our salary schedule. So whatever that would be, a percentage of of the base. Nice. And so and then it would go down. So like this year before I, I just I just know this because of doing you know basketball and golf. I pull up the salary schedule, what it would be for a first year teacher or the first column without a master's and run down and then whatever that percentage would be of that number. 
with how many years I would have done that. So the number then to the right doesn't necessarily mean it isn't necessarily their step as a teacher. It's their years of that of that. So like you know, like like, like I'll just I'll come back and say so, so they I had been a basketball been a coach. I've been a basketball coach for 14 years. You know, I'm in 29th year of education, but I got to come in on like step 14 for basketball because I've done that for 14 years. And so a percentage of you know, whatever percentage of that was step 14. So whatever step 14 on that salary schedule is the far left, I got a percent of that through basketball. I could if you pull that up, so I can like, show it to you. So <laughs> like Madison Love, even though she's not a teacher, not on the salary schedule, she's gonna come in on step two on the salary schedule. If you pull for up, the can percentage you just pull up the salary of that schedule because this is Elizabeth. her second year of coaching. If you pull up the salary schedule, I'll just I'll show you that makes sense. Yeah, but then I don't see how it could yes. vary because it's from season to season. So Coach Ross, he's done track forever, or if he's still doing it, he's done softball forever. So his pay for that season, for that extra duty, is based on a percentage. Right. So of like that what, what, what you what, what you would do to return right. this yeah. right there? Use the forty four three number. This BS. Yeah. So this forty four three. If you are in your first year. So if I was of in coaching. my first year of coaching, I would get whatever percent that would be. So maybe it is, you know, twelve percent. I get twelve percent of that if I was my first year doing it. If I was in my tenth year doing it, I would come to this number and I would get whatever fourteen percent of that. So, so I'd say and for none example, of this stuff matters for coaching. Yep. Say I've taught for ten years. I, I've been here ten years, or I'm on step ten, but this is my first year coaching. It's percent of that. Oh, it's percent of that. It's the percent of that. I see. I thought it. I thought it went with. It would be the percent of that because that's what year I was coaching. Oh, okay. Sorry. That no, so that's because that, I. I was thinking what you were thinking too. It was because like I'm getting. Like, yeah, I'm in year 29, but I'm getting paid a percent of that for golf this year because I never coached golf before. But for basketball, I got a percent of that because I coached it a lot. For golf, I'm getting step one. Perfect. Of that. that clarifies it. Thank you. Okay. I need a motion to approve the extra duty. Um, hold on, let me make sure you right thing. Uh, the extra <laughs> curricular Sands, Mackenzie, Lewis, and Madison Love. So moved. Second. There is a motion and a second to approve. The schedule stands those two individuals. Any more discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Okay, I need a motion to approve Mackenzie Lewis. Second. Is there any more discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Abstain. And now I need a motion to approve Madison Love. So move. Second. Is there any more discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed and those who abstain? Abstain. 501. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, in accordance with 610021 of the Advice Statutes of Missouri, the R2 Board of Education will meet in closed session to discuss three personnel and 13 individually identifiable personnel records. I just want to thank Elizabeth again for shortening this action language up. <laughs> you should ask for a raise. I can tell that. You should ask for a raise. Okay. Uh, I need a motion. So moved. Second. Second. You see that? Roll call starting with Austin. Yes. 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 Hey, that's six zero. Um, you two are welcome to stay if you want. You don't have to. So it's up to you. Just so you get a flavor of what we do. And that, you all can 